This artifact, a granite vessel from ancient Egypt, is estimated to be over 5,000 years old, possibly even older, and predates the first pharaoh dynasties. It's notable not only for being meticulously crafted from a single block of red granite. The vessel was subjected to a structured light laser scan with a high precision level. The analysis indicated that the artifact's construction exhibits precision comparable to that of modern manufacturing, impacting every aspect of the vessel – internally, externally, and in the relationship between its inner and outer parts. For example, the internal and external surfaces of this object are perfectly aligned or coaxial in such a way that their centers are precisely on the same straight line with an accuracy better than 0.01 millimeters. In other words, this level of precision is to a degree that is one-tenth the thickness of an average human hair. High precision was maintained in challenging areas, such as the vessel's interior, its thickness, and around the lug handles, where cutting would hinder rotation against the tool. How was this vessel crafted to such precision at a time when not only the potter's wheel was unknown in ancient Egypt, but also when the wheel itself was on the cusp of invention, as historical records suggest? Furthermore, how was this accomplished using one of the hardest materials known, granite? Further in-depth analysis reveals other interesting findings. One of them is that the math and geometric properties of this ancient granite artifact suggest a special design technique, and there are indications of some computer-like computational process that were needed on the artifact's production stage. Despite its age, signs of usage, and natural wear, the vessel displays remarkably accurate dimensions. The Vase Scan Project team, comprising expert metrologists, initially analyzed the vase. Associate Professor Marian Marsis from the Slovak University of Technology, a surveyor specializing in photogrammetry and laser scanning of cultural heritage, conducted further independent analysis. He found that the outer contours of the vase's circular symmetry deviates as little as just one-third the thickness of a human hair. This level of precision is extraordinary, with the error being so minute that it's at the very edge of what the laser scanner can detect. Which leaves us wondering, is this tiny imperfection the result of the vase's wear, or is it a flaw in the 3D model created by the scanner? The vase's construction is impressively straight, too. The way it was shaped suggests that it was turned with its axis of rotation set very straight, nearly perfectly perpendicular to its top surface. A very interesting finding is that the slight curvatures are everywhere, but the vase's curves change smoothly with variations of up to two human hairs stacked atop each other at max. That's how slight these changes in thickness on a very complex shape are. Marion Marsis's findings reveal that the vase deviates from basic geometric shapes like cones or ellipsoids and it lacks vertical symmetry. Its surfaces are nearly straight but with minor curves. We can also observe potential traces of the tools used in the vase's creation. Some of these marks are more prominently visible in the scans of its interior. These observations sparked debate among specialists, whether the vase's creation involved manual craftsmanship in certain stages or produced by machining, indicating the use of a unique yet unidentified technology. For example, when examining the flat top part of the vase, about 60% of the points show that it is almost perfectly flat. The variations are only a quarter of a human hair's thickness, and controlling such minute differences is extremely challenging without precise tools. When a vase is halved, the alignment of its internal and external surfaces along the same axis is known as coaxiality. The findings suggest that the vase was held very steadily in place while it was possibly being turned and shaped with an unidentified tool. The alignment of some parts of the vase's exterior with its interior is incredibly accurate 
which is remarkable considering it doesn't change regardless of how far the section is from the neck of the vase. The precision is comparable to finding a single hair's width deviation in a stretch of 10 meters. That kind of precision is extraordinary and indicates a very meticulous crafting and measurement process. Marion Marsis observed that the vase displays significant horizontal symmetry, suggesting it was rotated during production. However, the precision around the lug handles raises questions, as rotation alone seems insufficient due to their interference with tool movement. The challenge lies in how such precise curvature was maintained in these areas using basic tools, as even switching tools could introduce errors given the object's precision. The handles appear to be shaped from the remains of a donut-like form toroid, likely fashioned in a full circle while the object was spun during production. The variations from the perfect toroidal structure are minimal, topping out at equivalent to the thickness of a strand of human hair. The precision measurement in that area reveals remarkable coaxial accuracy. The deviation from a smooth surface is about a third of a human hair's thickness. It's crucial to remember that if this is an ancient granite object dating back at least 5,000 years, then it could have been crafted before the wheel's invention using only basic tools like stones and sticks. Marion Marsis concluded that to achieve such high coaxial precision and horizontal symmetry, the artifact must have been securely mounted in a rotating device. Achieving this level of precision in modern setup requires the use of highly refined components like smooth rods, precise bearings, and ball screws, akin to the mechanisms found in modern lathes. Essentially, it suggests that to replicate such accuracy, one would need equipment of a class comparable to contemporary lathe machinery. Crucially, Mary and Marsis concluded that the vase's high precision could not have been achieved with manual tools like chisels and hammers. While a basic wooden frame might theoretically suffice, in practice it lacks the required strength. To attain similar precision, the frame, particularly in parts like, quote, bearings, would need considerable enlargement. In contrast, machine tools are deliberately oversized and robust, typically needing to be at least 10 times sturdier than the workpiece to guarantee high precision. Interestingly, some aspects of the vase suggest that not all features can be explained by rotation on an advanced lathe. Mark Quist and his team adopted a different approach, focusing on the vase's design. They considered whether the design was simple or complex based on the arrangement of its features. If an object is easily replicable using basic rules or patterns, or if it seems random, it likely reflects an artisan's intuitive design. In contrast, if an object's parts are interconnected through a complex network of detailed rules, it implies a carefully planned design. To ascertain the vase's design principles, they measured its features and looked for patterns, consistent measurements, and significant ratios. Their findings revealed numerous regular patterns indicative of precise mathematical formulas. Their discovery, named the Radial Traversal Pattern, is a series of circles or arcs that define most of the artifact's features, especially its circular elements, interrelated with remarkable consistency and precision. Early in their investigation, they observed that many features corresponded to a specific geometric construction of unit circles known as the Flower of Life or Sacred Geometry they found that multiple grids of this pattern were utilized. The object's design intricately ascends and descends through various sizes of these Flower of Life grids, employing elegant geometric construction details extensively described by Mark on his website. The creators needed accurate approximations of pi, the ratio of a circle's circumference to its diameter, for practical calculations. They also precisely incorporated the golden ratio at a microscopic scale in one of the toughest materials to work with. Therefore, the vase's design was methodically interconnected with complex rules, not random. 
the makers had a profound understanding of algebra and geometry, indicating that the artifact was not just made, but meticulously designed and manufactured. Their calculations revealed that all proportions in the object are tightly interwoven. Altering even a single parameter in the design would disrupt the entire structure. Mark's team identified at least 15 levels of interrelation, all precisely synchronized down to microscopic scales. This implies that the vase's shape and structure are the outcomes of computations, and its complexity could be summed up in a single mathematical formula. In fact, the object more closely resembles a mathematical map, meaning that the object looks more like a representation created using mathematical concepts and calculations than a traditional vase. Basically, a mathematical map can be fed into a computer to create a design. This design automatically includes mathematical rules because of the computer program used. This led Mark's team to an unlikely experiment. Programming a CAD model using only a mathematical system that was found to determine the object's dimensions and positions without any tuning or arbitrary adjustments to determine how closely it'll match the actual artifact's features. It's remarkable to think a purely mathematical CAD model could map an ancient stone vessel with industrial-level tolerance, but the precise match in the results speaks for itself. This makes one wonder. No humans, trained animals, or natural phenomena, whether modern or ancient, can interpret mathematical formulas and equations to produce lathe-operating motions. The only known device capable of receiving input maintaining state, executing operations based on set principles, and generating output is a computer. Thus, Mark Kvist's conclusion is that implementing this artifact's design would be impossible without access to some kind of programmable computer-like system. The idea of ancient computers might seem implausible from the first glance, considering we used to think of computers as semiconductor-based devices. Yet the concept of devices for complex calculations isn't new. The Antikythera mechanism is a prime example of an ancient analog computer, and there were even earlier tools for mathematical functions, though simpler in design. Importantly, the limitations of semiconductor architecture and modern computers don't mark the end of the innovation of computational systems, as we will see alternative architectures being developed, some not only offering greater power, but featuring unconventional designs. The creators of this object managed to consistently maintain tolerances about a third of a human hair's thickness in shaping granite. In many areas, tolerances are even finer, roughly a tenth of a human hair's thickness. To achieve this, tools used to remove excess granite must have been incredibly steady and precise, comparable to high-end modern machinery, ensuring detailed work with minimal errors. The consistent accuracy across various curved surfaces and their relative positioning indicates that the object was either crafted in a single uninterrupted process or involved tool changes with no detectable misalignment. This consistency underscores the importance for the creators that the final product came from a single stone block. The creation process potentially involved computer-like systems adept at interpreting the design and executing the required shaping movements. Mark's conclusion is that such advanced technology is the only plausible explanation for the artifact's precision, raising serious questions about its origins. These findings really can make one think about the chance that we're looking at a sophisticated fake. The real weak point in this scenario is indeed the origin of the vase. In his interview, vase owner and private collector Adam Young addresses this topic, which we don't need to wrangle about here. The artifact possesses a traceable history, affirming its authenticity as a genuine pre-dynastic artifact. We must also consider that over 40,000 objects of similar precision have been found, 
most documented in museums with a clear archaeological origin. Once these are scanned, analyzed, and their precision verified in large datasets, this phenomenon will be undeniable. Moreover, being machine-made doesn't automatically ensure precision in the final product. In this case, precision must be either an inherent part of the process or, absurdly, intentionally sought by a hypothetical forger. Given its ancient origin, the artifact shouldn't naturally be precise. It could be merely round or roughly symmetrical, perhaps a unique one created by an ancient genius with a specialized tool. Two independent comparative analyses with modern machined stone artifacts have confirmed this assumption. Marion Marsus compared the ancient vase, presumably handcrafted with primitive tools, with a modern granite artifact machined and polished. The ancient vase was found to be ten times more precise than its modern counterpart. The vase scan project conducted a second comparison with a machined marble vase, which, by the way, is a softer-than-granite medium. The findings were similar in terms of concentricity and roundness. However, in wall thickness accuracy, the ancient vessel was 12.5 times more precise than the modern one. Further studies on six additional ancient granite vessels concluded that their manufacturing precision is comparable to modern processes, such as CNC lathe turning, as seen in the control modern vessel. Such levels of concentricity, roundness, and continuity are typically achieved using high-precision modern machinery. This reinforces the idea that precision doesn't solely arise from using even modern lathes, let alone manual labor with or without an ancient slow potter's wheel. It's technologically unfeasible. The object's remarkable accuracy also refutes the notion that high precision is achievable with unlimited production time. This is a clear misconception. To illustrate, giving modern mechanical engineers stone hammers and copper chisels and expecting precision akin to the artifact is absurd. This highlights that machines don't just expedite manufacturing, they achieve results unattainable by hand. In a subsequent analysis of six granite vessels from early dynastic and pre-dynastic Egypt, their precise craftsmanship was confirmed. Compared to the control marble vase machined circa 95, the red granite vase showed the greatest accuracy, indicating a significantly higher manufacturing precision. Apart from Vessel 5 and the red granite lotus vase, the remaining ancient vessels exhibited superior precision relative to the control marble vase, showcasing the ancient artisan's extraordinary capability to produce with precision on par with or exceeding that of contemporary machined vessels. These surprising results question our knowledge of history by their mere existence. Who made them? Were they even humans? Some question how such precision, seemingly attainable only with computerized machines, could appear in ancient times on Earth if no evidence of such advanced machinery from that era exists. This led some to speculate that if the required machine tools are absent, perhaps the technology was extraterrestrial in origin. Yet, before we resort to explanations of alien craftsmanship, we must exhaust all possibilities of ancient human ingenuity. The task is daunting given the artifact's intricate precision. While definitive conclusions remain elusive, two considerations stand out. First, the artifact's accuracy may point to a lost method of crafting beyond our current knowledge, potentially involving manipulation of stone in a state resembling a soft or clay-like consistency. Second, the interconnected mathematical patterns and precision in artifacts suggest that some kind of computer-like process was needed to control manufacture. The pattern found on the vase, arranging smaller circles within a larger one and determining its proportions, is reminiscent of the Cantor set, a simplest fractal from mathematics and computer programming. 
by applying principles of the Cantor set, where its lines determine the circle's diameters, curious coincidence emerges. A hierarchy of circles smartly occupying space and forming patterns that repeat endlessly but remain confined. Cantor sets have helped lay the foundations for tools like region connection calculus, a method in computer science that explains relations among holes, parts, parts of parts, and the boundaries between parts. This is vital in solving computational problems, running simulations, and designing models. Remarkably, a pattern very similar to the Cantor set appears to have been known in ancient Egypt. For instance, a relief in the Temple of Isis shows a pattern evocative of the binary form of the Cantor set. This ancient depiction aligns with the binary representation of the Cantor set used today. Right at first glance, these patterns strikingly resemble the hexagrams of the ancient Chinese Book of Changes, which is also based on the binary math of ones and zeros, the very foundation of modern computer systems. Such parallels imply that these mathematical ideas were possibly shared knowledge in the ancient world. Moreover, in-depth research into traditional drawings of the various ancient indigenous societies revealed that they can be modeled as the result of algorithms and operations of an algebraic nature. For example, sand drawings of the Vanuatu societies is a very ancient form of art and that was found to be using principles of the graph theories. These artworks are multidimensional, often reflecting the beliefs and cosmogonies. Ethnomathematician Marcia Asher noted that sand drawings exemplify Eulerian graphs, challenging the prior assumption that math was exclusive to only societies with writing. This insight, along with finding mathematical principles in many other places, raise questions about the form that ancient math takes in various cultures. Currently, these practices are recognized as traditional graphic arts, integral to spiritual and environmental knowledge. Sand drawings also have specific names, indicating their role as foundational elements for artists and reflecting the narratives crucial to societies like Vanuatu's understanding of the world. Ethnomathematician Alban da Silva from Paris City University suggests in his publication that these drawings might be linked to the way these societies conceive of their relationship with non-human entities. This suggests that there is still more to uncover in this story.